In this video lesson, we are going to look at how to sort and group records in a report and also how to force page breaks across those groups. You'll be familiar with doing this automatically when you create a report using the wizard. As we go through the wizard, dialing up the information that we want, just add a few of these fields in. Um, okay, and as we move on to the next stage, we can group information here, for example, by manufacturer. And once we've grouped, we can add our summary options in for doing calculations. We can also sort at various levels there. And that's just using the wizard, but I want to show you how to do this manually. So I'm just going to go back to the beginning and go through the wizard again, but this time not have a grouping and not have any sorting. So there is our report with no grouping and no sorting. Then we can have a look at how the report is actually laid out. We've got the report header and in the report header we've got the vehicle's label. The report is then broken down into a number of sections. We've got the page header which is the labels for the fields themselves and they appear at the top of every page. You've got the detail, and inside the detail is where the information is actually displayed. You've then got the page footer, which comes at the bottom of every page. And in this instance, we've got information about time and page numbers. And then you've got report footer, which comes on the very last section of the report, the very last page. Remember, all these sections can be clicked and dragged to open them up. And you can also switch them on and off from the view menu. View, page header and footer, report header and footer. We could just switch them on and off from there. So while I've got this view menu selected, I can show you the sorting and grouping menu option. And this is what we're going to be using. But I won't click it here. I'll show you that it's also available on the toolbar. Here's the icon I was talking about, the sorting and grouping icon. Once we bring up that dialog box, we can choose to sort simply by selecting a field from the drop down menu and then choosing what kind of sort we want to apply, ascending or descending. So I've applied an ascending sort on the registration number field. Let's have a look at that and see what it looked like. We'll switch to print preview and we can see the registration number details are now sorted in ascending order. We'll switch back to design view and have a look at that dialog box again. So that's the sorting and grouping. I sorted there simply on the registration number field. But you could then go on and sort by other fields just by dialing the next field up and adding a new sort to that level. So you can have multi-levels of sorts. But what we can also do here is group. I want to create a grouping for my report based on the manufacturer. So I'll dial up the manufacturer field in the field column. I can leave my sort on. But it's this section at the bottom that's important. We don't actually group until we tell it here that we're grouping. To have a grouping on the report, we've got to have a group header. So we have to switch on the group header. As I do that, you'll notice the header for the grouping of manufacturer appears on the report. You don't have to have a group footer. That's optional, but I like to have that on as well. Always look at the other options there. I'm not going to specifically talk about them, but have a look at the different options in there with the help bits to see what they do. And then experiment. So I've created a grouping 
on the manufacturer field. Let's have a look and see what that looks like. And you can see the information is now grouped on manufacturer. We've got all the Austins together, all the Daimlers together, all the Fords together, all the Hillmans together. I've switched back into design view now. Remember, never be afraid to actually have an experiment. All these labels and text boxes and controls can all be moved around to different parts of the report or form if you're working in a form. And depending on their position, they can have different effects. Let's try and move the manufacturer uh, text box, remember that's the data placeholder, into the manufacturer header. So again, it won't click and drag up there. You've got to cut it, select the header region, and then paste. Now let's just put that in the middle of the, the header area there and see what effect that might have. What that has done is brought out the manufacturer data and put it at the, the head of each grouping. There's all the Daimlers, there's all the Fords, there's all the Hillmans, there's all the Jaguars, and if we go through the other pages, we'll see the similar story. So that actually produces a much better looking report. And in doing that, we could perhaps get rid of the label for manufacturer. We could perhaps format this text box. Perhaps give it a different font color, make it bold. Perhaps give it some shading. Perhaps make the writing a little bit bigger. And we're starting to get um, much more pleasing to the eye um, report clearly grouped into different sections and that was just by moving the data placeholder for um, the manufacturer details into the header area that then allows you to move across all your other controls to give you a much more compact looking report. Remember also that all these sections can be made bigger and smaller. We don't need the, pay, man, the manufacturer footer, so perhaps we can shrink that down and see what we're looking like now. That's looking a lot better. And finally, back in design view again, We've looked at sorting, adding a grouping, moving the objects about to have a better effect. The final thing we can do is work with the properties of the actual sections themselves. So if I select the manufacturer header, for example, we can dial up the properties or use the right mouse click and dial up properties. And again, have a good look at the kinds of things that are available. The part that we're interested in for this syllabus, though, is the forcing new page. What we can do in that section is tell Access to create a new page for each section by putting a page break before each section. Let's have a look and see what that does. And we can see, as we were, we've got the, the grouping at the top of the page, but there's no other groupings on the rest of that page because the next grouping has been forced onto the next page and the next page. So each grouping is now on its own separate page. So that was looking at the properties of the sections and choosing to force a new page break before the section. Have a play around with the, the different options in there though.